What's up guys? I had a good sleep. Let's see if we get lucky and okay. No six star narcissist today. Too bad. I had it like one or two weeks before I had enough tokens to buy it so who knows when I'll get it the next time but it's gonna be massive when we get the six star narcissist. By the way let me show you so as you guys probably know Arena enjoyers is not like a massive, you know. We we don't have big spending requirements in this clan. Let's put it that way. <laughs> and we're actually going for three zero on CBC. Granted that we don't, you know, we don't do high points in every CC CBC anyway. So we kind of do what people naturally put out. But looks like the enemy clan is just giving us three zero like that, and we're not even putting up a lot of points so this is kind of good um, example or motivation for those clans that, or those people that don't really have the means to compete with the top CVC boys like IPR or GNL and MAD it's not like you need to do 100 million points to get 3-0 in reaction you might be able to do it with just like 7 million points or something like that it really like I feel like there really is no point to wail in CVC anymore. I don't I don't get why people are so into it. I would have thought that people what? People would have given up on it. What? Is that Ken Butz's clan? Wait, that that can't be Ken Butz's clan. No, it's Ken Butz's clan. What? How are they rank six? <laughs> well, okay, to be fair, they only have like 3 million more points than us, but still, how are they rank 6? That's kind of surprising. I guess they really wanted to get the reaction. To be honest, I mean, I mentioned it many times and I'll probably make another video kind of adjacent to the topic soon, but to be fair, I mean, stone skin is way better than reaction. The only downside is that bombs are pretty strong too, especially now with pinpoint, but like 4 piece stone skin versus like 3 reaction pieces it's not even comparable because you don't take any damage at all through stone skin and almost more importantly you're not gonna get CC now of course you can buff strip it and so on but it's still way better than reaction and in the best case scenario like you will have two accessories with stone skin and then you could have one accessory sl slot left for basically anything it could be one piece reaction or one piece feral or whatever like slayer anything that gives you stats but you could even have both of them okay our first opponent this morning is 4.8k not very intimidating but Let's see what he weeps up. Honestly, Tara's teams are almost almost to my liking these days. It, it could be so much worse than Tara's. I mean, Tara's is terrible, don't get me wrong. I hate him, he's OP. But it could be like triple lockout, so I'd rather meet this. Though he, he took the Mikake away, and I do like using Mikake against Taras if you get locked out, because he will not be able to do big AoE if you can buff strip him, and Mikake could do that even through lockout, but looks like he doesn't even have any. And we probably still want to pick another revi reviver instead of going with like Wukong or some buff stripper. Ideally, I'd switch the UDK for a buff stripper, but if I didn't, I'm sure he would have gotten it. Taras got polymorphed instantly. Surely nothing can go wrong at this point. I mean, yeah, we're, we're gonna get rid of his champions before Taras can abuse the boss. Wait. Okay. Elva boss in 6 piece stone skin, actually, so. 
there's no point to open with Rodos A3. We can't do anything with the second turn, but there's my team is too tanky. There's no way Taras can one shot me like this. We have the Duchess passive, which is not very often even remotely useful at all. But it does work against Taras and she is tanky enough. That there's yeah, there's no way she's gonna die to one hit. I mean, she could, she could, but she didn't. He, he didn't have enough path to bust to pull it off. But I mean, I guess in some very optimal scenarios, Taras could do like 300k AOE, but not today. I think we got like a warm up matchup as the first one. The only reason that um, we're getting stalled this much is because of the stone skin on the Elva and the weak affinity on the Mikage, but surely we can end it quickly now. We have double reviver, so I feel like we're pretty safe. Dab. And my Rodos was even tanky enough that. Ronda can't one-shot it with AoE nuke, with attack buff. I mean, that's kind of tanky. But we have double reviver, so even if he dies, it's not a problem. I don't know if we would have lost, though, if we... If we didn't get the polymorph at the start, because we did get that, but at least now we're good. Damn, every time I go go to shower before video, it always messes up my hair. I always have like strands of hair looking super, super dumb. But I literally just woke up this b before this, so I started the morning with the shower. Also, we don't still have the Aphidius updated. Damn, it is actually... This is getting hard. I thought this would be easy battle, but it's not that easy. But... They do this every time. I knew this was gonna happen since it was the same way last time and I was waiting and waiting. But they, they announced the Aphidus buff and then it happens like a week later or more than a week later. And everybody is just, you know, super tense and they wanna try it out. But every day we got some update in the game, but they don't have the Aphidus buff in the update. Oh wait, didn't I? I had the revive of cooldown. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Justice is like 280, so I guess she can rotate her revive pretty fast against a team like this. It's not like a double turn meter booster with Sifi. I feel like we're gonna start block reviving soon because we kind of took, took our time with this battle. Can we already do it? No. I'm sure the next one would be enough. The Elvas whale is kind of being a little bit annoying. We almost, like, first we had to wait two turns for the 6 piece stone skin. Then we had the A2 and she barely sur survived it. And then afterwards she, get, she got the whale, so we're five, min five minutes in already. But at this point, even if everybody dies, I feel like Rodos can solo his team. But yeah, I almost got too excited at the start. I mean, we weren't like close to losing, I don't think. But 
We did get the polymorph at the start and it still took this long, so it wasn't that easy. Let's double check that Aphelios buff isn't live, but it wasn't last evening and I'm sure that they didn't whip out an update during the, during the night because I'm pretty much the same time zone as Plarium is. Let me show you. I'm like, I'm so excited about Aphelios. I mean, Again, I don't think he's gonna be like life changer because it's kind of hard to get the burns up at the start of the battle unless you have like Gizmok or you're insanely fast. But even the 25% ignore defense is okay. The main issue is that the damage is on the first form and not second form. It would be better if the second form had it and the second form kind of sucks <laughs> even after the buff, but I'm still super excited to try him out and I already have him geared and my candy is kind of naked right now even though you know candy is really not that actually I should put the gear on back on candy <laughs> I had to waste a little bit money on it but I think there's a good chance that we might we might need him today so now let's put it back on candy but yeah I'm, I'm that excited that I can't <laughs> I'm wasting my silver because I can't wait to try the Aphidos. To, to feel like the pool was at least not completely trash, even though it was literally the worst possible mythical pool that you can do in the entire game. So. Oh, as a nay. Um, we had them in the last Hydra class, or their main clan. Let me see if I can whip out our... Um, I'll show you something funny. Well, okay, I, I don't have the best possible pixels to show that entire thing. But basically what happened is, you know, we're doing low points on Hydra on purpose. Because we don't, like, what's the point of, like, doing 100 million more points than is needed for a win? We're trying to do as little as possible to also win or at least get top 3. And like try to maximize the gains with as little effort as possible and um wait i think that's a nuke udk yeah our nuke, nuke wukong let's go with rotos and udk but so we have like one guy in the um in the clan called tian and he can do like 70 million points by himself uh 70 billion not, not million <laughs> And he's always saving his big boy key until the end. And this is what happened. Like, basically, I think everybody was around like 40, 47 million points, or 47 billion points, with like the last 10 hours left or something like that. And then everybody was started whipping out their like big boy keys, trying to. Should we go with Duchess and not Ankara? He has the Yuweko, but he also has the... I think we'll go, go with the Datsus. He has the Harimo. But yeah, that's what happened. And we barely edged them out. <laughs> we barely did slightly more points than them. So it, it was kind of funny, because like I said, everybody was around the same points as the rank 4 guy, but then the top 3 clan started doing way more in the end. 
we're not really like a hydra hydra professional clan so we're we're kind of getting carried by one specific player but i've seen that it's the same thing with many of our opponents like even in the asana main clan i think their clan leader did like half of their points or something like that <laughs> but at least we got the hydra chest that you get with the 1.2 billion point cap i think that was a super good update it made it a lot more reasonable for us plebs we, we were basically capping the hydra damage in our clan at 650 million and oh fuck we got one shot and then we had a vote on it and we ink oh fuck we didn't even one shot it we, we had a vote on it and we increased it to 1.2 billion because the chests are too good to pass up on. By the way, if you're like a number one democratic clan in the raid, we do vote about every important decision. It was not really something that was like, um, like a thing that I had in my mind when I made the clan, but it kind of happened that way and Every time there's something relevant in the clan, like in regards to the sieges or anything like that, we always do a vote about it. Dude, we lost so easily in this battle. I don't think I can get another revive off anymore. Yeah, not against the Mikage and Yumeka. There's just too much turn meter manipulation. Damn, the Wukong, Wukong got, got us with the one turn. That's the issue, like... Um, I feel like Wukong and, and Rotos kind of do the same role. Wukong can obviously do much bigger AoE nuke, but Wukong doesn't have any chance ever against any Harima team. You literally can't win with the Wukong against them in any scenario, and Rotos kind of can, but because I don't have Harima, it's just... It feels so crappy to run with new Wukong because 100% of the battles I will meet Wukong and multiple lockouts and Armands and so on and it's just impossible to use Wukong even though he can be very good against me and it's kind of frustrating but I don't have a lockout, I don't have a Harima I always cry about it but it does suck to suck <laughs> it does hurt, it is painful I feel like both Rodos and Harima, uh, Rodos and Narciss are Taras counters. But should I actually open? Let's open with Rodos and UDK. Let's see if he goes with Narciss. 50 A ones are just OP and annoying to deal with. Okay, he's going with triple nuker. I often see this because both Harima and Mario's kind of do utility as well and not just pure damage. Pretty often actually. People pick both of those two and then one more nuker against me. Uh, I guess we'll go with more than Narsus. He's not gonna have lockout at least. I mean if he picks it now I'm probably gonna ban it, but there is that. Actually, I'm kind of almost tempted to just go for the CV ban here. I mean, he's gonna get the defense buff even without her, but there will be a lot of less. Hmm. Actually, I don't do this too often, but I think we go for the Taras ban. He has so many buffs and so much damage, and he's gonna go first anyway, and we don't have a boss stripper. I'm looking at the Reddit thread where people are talking about the fusions that they missed that they really regret. I'll whip it out after this battle. 
I've actually missed several fusions in the past um, for various reasons, like the Eostrid fusion, I missed it by five fragments and I thought that I had done all events, but I guess I missed something that I still don't know what I even missed. And then there was the... Whatever is the animal in the High Elves, which was Christmas Fusion a couple years ago, I just missed that because we were we were too busy on Christmas and I just weren't able to do the events. So that kind of thing has happened to me before, but I don't think I really regret badly missing anything. Like I didn't ever miss anything important, let's put it that way. I don't know if I want to open with the... I feel like we want to open with the A2 actually. Okay, didn't, didn't get rid of the Sifi. Okay, never mind, she took a turn. Uh, can we just kill the Sifi? I feel like maybe with that defense buff gone. Okay, yeah. That was better than pulling out the revival. Ah, and of course my camera died. By the way, this is what I keep telling to you guys and people people keep uh, like uh, I think there was a comment comment yesterday or two days ago that mod sucks and Angora is way better or something along those lines there you go again like proof of the mod greatness it wasn't even the passive that came into play here but it was the bar strip and the bar strip can be super you know useful in practice and by the way we were stunned there and we didn't eat the stun because of the mod passive, so insane champion. Make sure to get more than don't underestimate her. Give me a second, I need to fix the dead camera. Yeah, I keep running into all kinds of annoying small tech issues making videos. This wasn't happening before, it only started happening recently that the camera like crashes randomly when recording videos and it doesn't make any sense to me like the actual camera I can see that it was on the entire time and I have tested that when this happens if I just open any camera application on my PC it will work it's something to do with the recording program OBS but I feel like I haven't changed anything and now this suddenly started happening and it keeps happening pretty consistently it's annoying to to deal with and a couple days ago i was trying to record a video and every time i opened the champion training tournament which i wanted to show on the video the camera would crash so if there's some like uh some tech genius that could explain me how those two are correlated maybe i can figure it out but there's some kind of weird software issue that sprung out of like nowhere not a big deal it's very very first world problem but it's super annoying it keeps interrupting my videos i think we're gonna go with mod again N not not even to bolster my point but i literally just mod has polymorph we can possibly remove the enfeeble and the defense buff mode is just so useful and this time we even have the armaments i think this is the first battle today where i get it and obviously it's way better if you're the first pick and you get it because that kind of limits the enemy team's options a lot and if I have armaments then I only need to pick one reviver. Who do we want to ban? He picked Ramant which is kind of weird. We do have a good amount of polymorph, well like half of the team when he, he bans it but uh, fuck. Let's go for Wukong ban. Yeah. He does have the Mikage, so he probably would polymorph my Wukong anyway and then one-shot it, so probably we can buy some time 
with this because I don't think that Marius alone can kill me that easily. Now, he has a lot of turn meter mon manipulation, so he definitely can do it, but I can probably hang in for a little bit, and his team is not that tanky, so if any of my nukers get any turns and they are not enfeebled, I should be able to get kills. I kind of took the <laughs> took the coward's way out in trying to win this battle, but I went for the nuker ban. Oh, okay. That Ramadu did a little bit of damage, like 22k on Rotos. So I don't know if it, if it is built with some damage or it was just a lucky crit. To be fair, 22k isn't that much. The other day my Ankara hit, I think, 17k on video. So probably it's still not a nuke build, even though it kind of looked like it. Okay, now it's game over. There's no way that my Rotos can't finish it here. Looks like the Mega Whales are kind of sleeping in the morning and we're fishing in the shallow, shallow waters and I'm getting kind of uh, fights that I don't feel too bad about. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the hard battles were the two Harima ones that we got, the other two were not, not that bad. Damn, we only got one Impulse piece. Well, it does have speed roll on it, so might be useful. Everything else, completely worthless. I don't think I have a single half decent piece on seal. And I have like one piece on Impulse and I'm, I'm just waiting to get a good pair on it and who knows when that happens. Let's roll the weapon and see if we whip out a triple speed. I made a video about it but you don't want to underestimate the passive on the Impulse set. It's the same as speed set giving you 12% speed but also 12% chance to reduce a random skill cooldown by one turn and that's like game changing like if you proc that at the right time on the right skill you literally will win because of this ability i feel like that's super op but nobody has this set so it's not really becoming a problem okay those rolls suck i think everything else well i'll keep it i think i still have the one I'm kind of getting close, you know, a little bit late and not not super cool, but yeah, there's one one mission where you need six chill pieces. I'm sure that I have like way more than a full set, but let, let's just keep them. <laughs> let's just keep them in, in like as insurance that I don't I don't take any more time than I already did to finish the Marius, but I should have it by next week. I mean, I am using gems every day to do the Iron Twins, and I didn't do it yet today, so surely next week I'm gonna gonna get the Marius. Okay, let's get some more wins. Looks like today is my lucky day and I can farm level 94 opponents and, <laughs> and feel good about winning. Nice. In, in before he pulls out the full mythical team. Plus Armands, I guess. Yeah, this was the thread that I was talking about where people are crying about the fusions that they missed, but I don't think there's anything to see that I didn't already mention. Everybody is going with Mikage and Wukong. I guess it's the free-to-play way to compete or something. I never really liked using that comb because of Harima, like I said, and usually I meet Harima in every single battle, so it doesn't 
really feel very practical. But maybe he also has Harimo. I guess we'll see, but if you did, I mean, I would definitely pick Harima first and then Wukong, because it's not like he's that contested pick. Uh, Garol? I almost forgot her name. I, I had to think about it for a second. <laughs> the damage is okay, but there's not that much utility or anything insane about her. She's not really considered a very good mythical. Like, every other new girl, she would have been super good a couple of years ago, but now there's really no reason to use her. In the old Necret meta, Carol would have been insane. Yeah, let's talk about those before. I, gu I guess there's the um, official patch update from Plarium that we could also read up, but if you don't get any rewards for those achievements, then who cares about them? I mean, I'm not gonna, but maybe somebody else will. Like, for instance, if anybody played World of Warcraft, and they have this in many other games, you have achievements in that game, but you do get rewards from the achievements. Like, most of them don't give any re rewards, but some of them will, and the re rewards can be kind of interesting. Like. You can get mounts that you can use in the game, or you might get titles and stuff. And that kind of gives the achievements some relevancy. But if they were just... Do I want to use the... I think we'll save the A2. But if you don't get any rewards out of the achievements, I don't think they really have any prestige. Like, you can see other people's achievement points like when you look at them in, in that game and you also get rewards from getting them in the first place so I feel like the way Plarium is implementing it doesn't really seem very attractive I'm I've quickly glanced at it before but I'm pretty sure there literally was no rewards for doing it Let me double check and pull out the official post about it. Wait, what's happening? <laughs> I thought the battle was done, but I I wasn't uh, paying attention for us. Okay, looks like I. I paused it at the right time, we're, we're still good. Okay, nice. We bullied 11.94 and now I can feel good about myself. Yay. So, here's the bats highlights and this is kind of annoying thing that they do if we're crying about Plarium, is that they tell us what's coming in the next, like, update, or, like, this is, you know, very biased from CC perspective, but they, they tell us what's happening there, and then there's also some other stuff that they don't tell us, and then, like, then you might miss it and you will see it in the patch notes, but they always um, hide some of this from us. But, um... I don't think they mention it here, and we can't see any rewards from these achievements. So if it's just some batches that people can see if they look up your profile, who cares? There, there needs to be some rewards tied to this to add some prestige. 
I mean, it's not like uh, it, it's not like it hurts me, but you know, we could add the tournaments for live arena. There's a million more interesting things that you could do than add some birthless patches. Like again, I feel like this is their campaign that they've been doing this year. They saw that Watch Your Realms got a lot of praise and they have all the utility stuff like the tavern update, the champion presets, all of them have been like copied from Watch Your Realms, but they have been like scuffed versions of what Watch Your Realms ha has and you know like less good and more annoying than the good versions in that game. And in that game for instance you do have achievements but there's also re rewards tied to those achievements and the re rewards are like you get one guaranteed random legendary champion that that's the level of rewards we're talking about so Plarium just giving us achievements with nothing tied to it who cares like maybe somebody does let me know in the comments if anybody cares about it but I certainly don't and I can't really comprehend how somebody would unless unless you actually get something out of it like who knows they didn't show it there but maybe there is some avatars or profile banners or something like that which they but if it did have those i feel like they would have shown it in the patch notes but even if it's those i feel like that's not enough but as far as I can tell, there's literally nothing tied to it. What? Another 4.8k opponent. Hopefully, we will send him back to the Shadow Realm after this battle. <laughs> He's opening with the Frolny pick, so... That, that doesn't really look too good for his account. Might be even worse than mine. To, to be honest, if he opens with Frolny Pig. Okay, Arbiter and Warlord, that could be very strong, but with Frolny it doesn't look super scary, but maybe he whips out like Georgit and Grixia, then it could be kind of good. I could pr pretty much go with Drodos at this point. Even if he picks UDK, it's not that big issue. I could just ban it, so. I don't really mind going against the Warlord that much. I'm super used to it at this point. Okay, he's really thinking about does he want to pick the UDK or not. Surely he's gonna pick it if he thinks about it that long, but okay, no. We could basically go with anything here. Uh, but let's go with mod. The thing with no, nah, let's not go with mod. Should I? Let's go with Dutchess. Like some of the Avidio stuff are not 
remove a ball, but he could get polymorph. But okay, let's go with it. Hmm. Yeah, let's go with this. I was almost thinking just banning the Aphidos, but not not Aphidos, Garnets. But let's see what happens. Carnage is not super popular at all, even though quite many people have him at this point. But for me personally, he is very annoying to deal with. Like, you are getting locked out and not able to do anything, and you can't even cleanse those debuffs. That didn't, that didn't really penetrate the shield though, so it's not that big deal. Okay, can we one-shot the Necrot? Come on. Okay, easily. 180k, not even close. And there goes the Carnage. Again, we, we can't cleanse these annoying lockouts. I'm almost getting a little bit weirded out by this session that we're not meeting any super strong enemies. I don't know if they're all all sleeping or working at this time or, or what. I mean, I feel like it's kind of random. Some people have told me that certain time slots are harder or easier than other ones. But in my experience, it's super random. You know, all it takes is a couple of strong accounts to be queuing at your time and then the experience is completely different but looks like today we're not meeting anything it's almost too peaceful because i know it's not this easy and these guys just don't have the best champions but we might face like some god account five times in a row so let's not get too ahead of ourselves yet yeah, so, so far it's only one loss and we have like um, five wins. And even the one battle that we lost, maybe if the Wukong didn't proc the Helm, Helm Smasher on the first turn, I feel like we could have won that battle, but we died kind of super fast against him. If we can get like five, five more wins, maybe we can get to halfway to the 6k points already. Even though I just just now got to the 5.9k I feel like I got to from 5.8k to 5.9k that the entire time was actually kind of fast so but I don't think I made any progress in the game at all <laughs> maybe I did maybe it doesn't feel like I did but maybe you know Galleos and Avidus, I guess that was some sort of progression. No lockout yet, I feel like he totally might pick it, but I almost feel like picking Darces and Narsus against this just to get the Polymorph and the whales and some tankiness. Whales can actually be kind of good against Harima when she can't do her triple hit on Rotos or whatever Nuker. Even though she can't weak hit on the Duchess, but Duchess is still tanky and can take some hits. 
Okay, Geese Mark. Okay, definitely was the right choice to go with the Gartos here. And he's not. He has one big left, but he doesn't have any lockout yet. So he's the last one is lockout. Lockout, I'm just gonna ban it, and it's not gonna be Isu in this battle. We don't even need Ankara. Is what I'm saying. Should we go? Yeah, let's go. Rotos and Mord, maybe? No. You know what I can pick here. Rotos and Helicat. Yeah. If I picked Rotos and anything else, he would pick UDK and I would ban it, and that would be fine. But he. <laughs> We're gonna go with Rotos and Helicat, of course. Now he has to pick a. Uh, a bus chipper, but we're obviously gonna ban it. So, and it's it's so fun. Like this is the like pain that I have to deal with when enemy gets the first pick and they get the armaments, and then they also have like Quixia or something like that, and it's basically impossible to win win against them in what win against them in that situation. Okay, this guy is just going for the hail Mary and trying to ban my only reviver. But what I was saying is that in this battle we got Helicat and Armands, meaning that he he can't like he can only ban one of them and Helicat is super annoying to deal with if you don't have any bus trippers or lockout or block bus debuffs and so on. Or ignore block damage. But he doesn't have any of that, so Helicat is gonna have a field day against this guy. What? Okay, we got unlucky there. <laughs> we got three percented by the Harima. Oh, okay, good. I was gonna say that if we lose now, that would suck. But okay, we, Helicat was fast enough that it didn't matter. But we got super unlucky at the start of the battle. I mean, his Gizma got polymorphed, sure. But him getting polymorphed is kind of high chance. We have, we have two champions with polymorph. But us getting resisted by the Harima is insanely unlucky. And it's actually a big deal because if that didn't happen, I would have one shot at the CV with my Rotos A3. And now I can't do any damage with the Rotos A3 and the Harima, I mean the Arman's Polymorph is on cooldown. So it's kind of actually stalling us a lot in this battle. And we don't have any reviver, so it's actually kind of looking bad, but let's see. Okay, please no weak. Uh, no, uh, we can definitely kill it with the A3 as long as no weak it. Let's go for the A3, come on. Nice, okay, no weak it. Obviously, Ankara can revive it with... Uh, Cooldowns intact and turn meter, but we're, yeah, we're good, we're good. Now, now she can't. Okay. But I mean, everybody's pretty much full health, but I feel like this was very close. I thought it wouldn't be close at all, but that three percent, like struck like a lightning in the worst first possible situation. Today has been going too easily, so I'm kind of uh, expecting the burst at this point. But yeah, him letting my Armands into the battle, I don't know what he, he was thinking. Thinking with that, I don't let the enemy have Armands in any situation. Like, even if, if I have to let them have like Grixia or Galatir or whoever, it's much better to let, let them have those champions than Armands. I mean, even though those champions can function against Lockout, and they're always useful, and Armands can just be locked out, but if Armands gets a turn, it's pretty much game over. Like, there's nothing more annoying to deal with than Armands. But I guess that guy disagrees. <laughs> he, he rather banned my Datsas instead of Armands. Swedish Caviar. Okay. I have spoken about it many times, but 
as you guys might know, in Finland basically everybody can speak Swedish. It's mandatory in school. Everybody has to learn Swedish. But it's not the same in Sweden and I'm kind of salty about that. Like that that doesn't make any sense to me. Why do we have to be the nice guys if Sweden are, is not following our courtesy? Then fuck them and let's remove it from schools and let people learn something more useful like Spanish or any other language with like hundred times more population of using it. That's what I think. That's that's how I feel about it. But there's some people that disagree with me on that big time. It's like a hot topic political issue on Finland and it's been like that for I guess de decades at this point. There's like an entire party <laughs> who's basically one of their main purposes is to uh, abolish mandatory Swedish in school. That's not like my biggest priority in life, but I feel like it doesn't make sense and it's kind of outdated and we should just get rid of it. Like, I'm not saying that you can't learn English in the school, but I don't think it should be mandatory. And if you're gonna start a language on the first grade, like we do here, we start both English and Swedish in the first grade. But if it was me and it, it was my children, I would rather them learn some other more relevant language than Swedish. No, no offense, but maybe like English and Spanish or English and Chinese or something like that. I, I think that would make a lot more sense and it would be good for the future of Finland if we did it. Is he gonna pick the UDK? I, I guess he's not. And the thing is, you know, not, not to like try to argue for it too much. Ah, oh, charge it. Yeah, I think that's fine, but do we want to ban the lockout or Arima? Or should. No, let, let's ban the charge it. Yeah, let's go for that. But, um, no, I, I totally forgot my train of thought. Something about Swedish, but now, <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I was gonna say that you know, Swedish and English is very similar, half of their words are the exact same, or they have like one letter difference and so on. So, it, all the Swedish people can speak, speak English just fine anyway. For Finnish people, it's kind of hard to learn English, for Swedish, it's like almost like a dialect of the like Swedish anyway, so I feel like that thing just doesn't make any sense from any angle. Okay, nice. I haven't been using Wukong that much, like I feel like he's one of my main picks. But often I just decide to pick something else, like we go with the double reviver and UDK, or maybe we get Armands and double reviver, or Armands UDK and one reviver. And Wukong just doesn't make the team that often, even though he's like one of my favorite and main picks still, but as a support and not an ogre. I feel like I didn't pick him a single time today, which is kind of surprising. I think I think we got this. <laughs> We're doing pretty good so far, and I don't think Harima is gonna end us that easily. Actually, we should op open with the A3, not the A2, but without defense buff, it can't kill us that easily. Surely not. Yeah, banning the charge, it was definitely the right decision. 
what are, what was I even thinking, like entertaining the idea of banning the warlord or harima for a second? There, there's no way I can lose with this match. I'm I'm sure I can lose, but it's very unlikely that I would lose at this point. Wait, what? What happened there? I don't think he's supposed to take any damage from the counter attack because of his passive. Or this, I, did I miss? I understand something. I feel like we shouldn't have taken any damage. B whatever, whatever. <laughs> what? No helm smasher proc. I feel like that Dutch should have died even without the proc. But if we got the proc, it would have been like double damage, so that definitely was without it. But we are still good, I mean, we got the polymorph, so even when Harima passive gets up, we can just kill the Dutchess. Wait, can the water? I feel like he has the lockout. Well, even still, yeah, even still, we, we can kill kill the Dutchess. Yeah, I, I knew he had the lockout on that turn. Okay, I think Harima is gonna go before Rodos. Is it? Yeah. Ah, oh, not not good. How soon are we gonna get the? Ah, oh, fuck. Damn, three turns. Ah, oh, fuck. I don't know if we can actually survive that long. I, I was saying that we can't lose this battle, but damn, three turns. Ah, oh, I don't think we can win. I think we lost. Especially with the Wukong Polymorph. Oh yeah, and we're yeah, we're gonna get locked out before How did he how did he get it back that fast? I feel like he shouldn't have had it yet. But okay. I guess I wasn't fearing the lockout enough. <laughs> I've been doing kind of okay against the lockout teams lately, but it can be it can be strong. I'm still let's look at the Okay, I can't cancel it. I'm pretty sure with the Narcissus passive we shouldn't take any damage from enemies outside their turn. And I feel like we took damage from the Harima counter attack. I'll have to play that afterwards. I feel like that wasn't the Harima's turn and it was a counter attack. Maybe I just saw it wrong because if it was a counter attack then that was a bug. I don't think that made any difference in the battle. Most likely, but it's a little bit confusing. Ah, nice. Okay, I think maybe our good RNG has now ended and we're starting to meet strong teams. He has two picks left, and we have the last pick. Maybe we can pull out the sneaky helicat against this guy. M maybe that's the way we can deal with nice. Especially, uh, maybe I should try to do tr try to be a little bit sneaky here. If we pick Rodos and <laughs> Rodos and Datsis and he picks UDK and uh, Anuker, he's done. <laughs> he's, he's done. He's totally gonna pick UDK now. And we can ban it. Well, even if he, you know, even if he, he could pick something else, as long as he doesn't pick 
like Lazarius and a buff Jupiter. Anything else is fine, but I think he's gonna... It would be so funny if he if he does pick UDK and Lazarus now, but as long as... Yeah, okay, okay, UDK and Siegfried. We're good with that. Say hello to my little friend. He has the Siegfried with the annoying passive, but so do we, so... Enjoy. He, he has to ban the Armands, like he can't go for the Helicat ban, so... I'm not saying that it's a guaranteed win, but I feel like it's kind of even battle, and I do have faith in my Rotos as long as he can get some turns and he's not cocked by UDK passive or Arima passive. So I, I think we can do this. Both of his mythical nukers are tanky and have very annoying passives that makes them unkillable. But, we do have unkillable too, and if Narsus gets a turn, he could one-shot the Siegfried. Kind of a bold choice to pick Siegfried against Narsus, but I guess it's that OP that he wasn't even worried about picking it against the biggest counter. Not like I am with Rotos and Harima. <laughs> I have nightmares about Harima every night. Okay, we're good. As long as the Helicat didn't do enough damage to Proc the block damage passive from Siegfried, I think we're good. Nothing can stop stop us anymore, TM, but I think so. Yeah, th that that's all fine. That's all fine. We we still have the Rotos A3 now and we We got rid of all of the threats. I mean he, he does still have the nice passive. A nice passive can be issue, so that's maybe the last obstacle that we have in this battle. Ah. I wish I had enough damage to kill the um, the marriage got there, but I guess we have to go for A1 now. Yeah, at, at this point I don't think he can one-shot my team with Nice. I, I feel like we're good, but Nice is so OP. I, always get um like now when we proc the passive and kill it that's the that's the final boss battle where he one shots us and revives his entire team surely we can't die now we, we have defense buff even with defense buff he yeah, he still did a number on, on us. Like, Helicat is insanely strong. Okay, we have it back. Even though he's not that useful in the meta right now, but goddamn Helicat is strong. Not only does he do the block damage, and does damage with his like passive and A1, but you also get the defense buff after it. Then defense buff is so so rare thing in this game. Like there isn't many good champions that give it to you. It's super a big deal. If only Helicat was like a mythic champion. And <laughs> now now I'm maybe giving Plario some bad ideas, but 
Imagine if there was like a mythic helicat and he can do the block damage against uh, lockout. And maybe he could also have some kind of pro protected block damage or something annoying like that. Prob probably they are gonna do something like that. It would make so much sense. Like, they want to put out those new champions that are OP and tanky. And I just made a video yesterday or last night about the like the fact that Plarium keeps like shuffling the deck and they introduce something OP and then they introduce something OP to counter that. And we keep cycling between speed meta and tank meta. And maybe mythic mythic helicat or something like that would be the way to usher in the stall meta again and get rid of the speed. <laughs> maybe they will do it. I mean imagine if you have a kit like that. Mythic Helicat and you have protected block damage, like what are you gonna do against that? You, you, you need very specific uh, utility, you, you maybe need to pull out like Rotos or something like that, but it might be horrible against speed teams. Anyway, that's another win, I feel like we got maybe like 10, 10 wins and 2 losses today. Okay, seven, 7 wins and 2 losses, but still pretty good. Okay, <laughs> finally we are meeting the big boys. 10k point opponent. This surely can't be easy, easy. He even got the first pick. Should I open with Mord or Ankara? Driver's Gaze. <laughs> uh, I don't know, I feel like I almost agree with that statement. I can't I can't really disagree with that one. It was like a big issue in like all of the top clans. I can tell you like some insights about it that you know most of the top accounts are like practically every single top account is played by somebody else than the owner. Sometimes the owner of few specific accounts might play it themselves, but even that happens super rarely. And in the meantime, there's always somebody else playing on those top accounts. But I feel like it is kind of bad for the PvP scene, and I wish Plarium would enforce those things a bit harder. But uh, yeah, I feel like it kind of makes it like a bad system, and at this point we are getting like more and more drivers in the top arena clans and less and less like actual individual players with their own accounts and they were trying to convert me to drive for like years and years they were really i got so many um fuck i'm too slow i had so many talks with many many people including like the different leaders in mad about starting to drive Many people were like offering me to play on their accounts and it always became like a game to them that they knew that I don't like driving and I'm against it and they kept like insisting that to me but yeah I, I wasn't into it. I mean nothing wrong with that per se but I don't think driving is really it kind of uh, is bad for the PvP community I, I feel like. Datsus. Okay, I was too slow. Like, the thing with the driving, it's not the driving itself per se, but um, it creates the culture where the account trading is like super big deal and all of the top accounts are traded and um, yeah, it, it's a weird system. I feel like it kind of takes away the like the community aspect from it and nobody can rise up in the ranks and become become a top arena player unless you like buy a count and you're a driver and so on and yeah we, we kind of are at a stalemate and the pvp community is slowly dying and so on
there, there was so many, you know, there was many people in Mar that kind of uh, built the same way too, and they all, you know, quit the game. <clears throat> my, my voice is cracking a bit, but yeah, they all kind of the, the people that felt the same way. They all quit over the time, and then we just have a bunch of sugar daddies and drivers and massive, you know, account trading problem. Okay, this battle wasn't even remotely competitive. We got instantly one banged by the Comidus. Anyway, probably I would have been better if I clicked the dots faster, but only way I was gonna win against that would have been Polymorph Prox, but I guess um, I would have had higher chance to get it with Duchess because she does have 6 star blessing and fearsome presence, mastery, and maybe the shield could have helped us. But I was kind of basically <laughs> expecting to lose anyway, so I guess I self sabotaged myself. Let's go with the UDK. We don't have a... Wait, fuck. <laughs> that was a misclick. It was supposed to be Rodos and... Uh, I mean, U UDK and, and Narsus, not not Necro. Fuck. Uh, I, I was gonna say that um, I fought against this guy many times. Let's just go with the UDK and Narsus instantly. But that Necro was a misclick. I guess they are right next to each other, but fuck. That wasn't good. Odin. And now I don't really have like room for like Wukong and Reviver. I think it would be good to pick those two, but we already have like two supports, so can't do it. I think we'll go with the mod, yeah. I mean, Necrot isn't the first. Isn't the worst, not the first. It's not the worst, but probably UDK or Wukong would have been better picks in this battle. We do have like shields, so maybe that's maybe that buys enough time at the start. Aphidus. I feel like I should go for the Aphidus ban, honestly. Damn, the for, for the speed Void Aura is kind of OP. I talked about that in my video, that even though it's only Void Champions, but Many of the most, you know, never mind the Nukers, but Sifi and Yumeko and like Shu Chen, many of those speed boosters that you want to be fast, all of those pretty much are Void Champions, so the aura kind of makes sense. But these guys running like a full Void team against us. Okay, can we please proc the Helm Smasher? Well, even if we do it, I, I feel like it's over. I can kill the Sifi if we proc it, but I don't think we can kill the Marius with the defense buff up and with the A2, yeah. It's over. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can instantly tell the difference, like... We were meeting those, you know, free-to-play teams early on, and then we meet like two, like you know, Giga Wells in row, and the teams are completely different, and it's not even close. Like, we literally don't even get a turn against those.
Not like back in the days when Necrat could stall for days even, even against the biggest of the Giga Wells. Okay, Krixia. Yeah. I, I guess we'll open with the Angora this time instead of Mord. Wait, level 94. Is this the guy that we fought before? I think it's a different account, but both of them are level 94s for some weird reason. Uh, I don't know if I even want to pick Armands, but he's not gonna pick it at this point anyway, so... We could almost go with more than Armands. Should we do it? Mm, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Damn, I was gonna say that it's a level 94, so why am I getting so um, scared of this guy, but clearly for, for a reason. Who do we even want to ban? I'm almost feeling like we could go for the Seek from the ban. Yeah, yeah I, I think that makes the most sense. Surely this guy doesn't have the best gear. Maybe we can somehow survive the Gizmark Nook when he puts the defense down and switches to the second form. If we can survive that, then I feel like we can win. Damn, we got no weak hits. Both Rotos and Angora could have taken a weak hit, but Neither one did. Nice, nice. I think, can we get a turn on Narsus? Who does he have Polymorph on? Only Krixia. <laughs> Come on, don't lock us out. Fuck. Dude, if we got the extra turn there, it would have been, it would have been super good. His counter attack was almost helpful for us. Okay, I, I think we lost though. I don't think there's a comeback. He has double lockout and mode is locked out. So, but I, I guess Galadir doesn't really count since we do have the mod, but we are still locked out and. I don't think we can survive that many turns. Yeah, there's no way. He's not doing a lot of damage, but there's no way we can survive it. Yeah. 
what can I say? Maybe a little bit salty about it, but <laughs> it does feel kind of weird. I mean, that happens all the time, so it's nothing new, but it, it does feel annoying. Time, time to whale for mythical, so I guess. I mean, I kind of did, but you know, 20 mythic shards, that's kind of a lot. I don't really, I'm not really planning to buy them like regularly or next time or anything like that. Maybe we can just organically get lucky, who knows, I mean, some people do, why, why can't it be me? <laughs> That's what everybody says. But yeah, basically we got owned by all of the good accounts and we we dominated all of the free-to-play accounts, so kind of today went exactly as expected. Nothing nothing super crazy, I don't I don't think. There was no big upsets that we we beat any of the 20k point opponents or anything like that. I do kind of feel like I could have rocked Polymorph a bit more today, but 6 star Nars soon. Ho hopefully that will make a massive difference. And I did get the more 2 star from the Soulstone Pulse. 2 star doesn't add extra chance to proc it, but when we get it to 3 star it will, so I'm sure I will get that sometime soon -ish. I mean, it's super RNG, but obviously I have enough tokens to buy it if it appears. Gizmark again. Do I want to be Rodos or not? He could totally have our base too, so picking Rodos might be dumb, but let's do it. Let's do it. I kind of still want to ban the Harima, so if he just picks some other random support and we can go for the Harima ban, then that would be kind of good. Ramandu, okay, we're still gonna go with it though. I mean, Ramandu could totally get Polymorph. I, I guess we only have two Polymorph champions, so we don't have it that much here. UDK is five star too, and he's kind of close, but eight month, eight months uh, worth of farming away. I think this was the last battle, yeah, I, I think the time slot ended for today. Okay, and against this guy we get instant polymorph and we... I feel like we don't need it, but we don't really want to underestimate the Gizmark. He can totally get us, like the last guy did. Well, he does have the Gizmark in Stone Skin and Pinpoint, which is good build, there's nothing wrong with that, but... I don't think he's gonna have enough damage to one-shot us though. 
I mean, he's definitely not, but how much damage does he do? Okay, so that was, yeah, that, that was the double hit, by the way, so, okay. More this, more this healthy, we're gonna get the Rotos revive, so I think we'll want the last battle. I mean, I don't know if you even can, like, it's kind of close, you know. It's not like it's that um, far away, and this mark took like 200 turns. That, that's kind of dumb. Wait. And we have to go for the nuke now, and Narthus is gonna die. Right? No. Is he gonna kill it before? I think Mord. I think we lost this. I think Mord is gonna. No, okay. Mord didn't die to the burn. Okay, nice. Yeah, I think we're good now. God damn, Gizmark is OP. <laughs> Holy moly. And Gizmark kind of used to be one of the lesser wanted mythicals. But now he's actually, you know, <laughs> now he feels like he's the best one. I mean, I've always felt that way, but um, it feels like he's even better. Ah, fuck. Okay. Even better than he used to. And people, other people used to debate with me all the time that Gizmark is not, not very good. I think we lost. I think we got two battles again against Gizmark in Roll where we we got dominated. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. We had some fun at the start, but then in the end we had a massive massive loss streak and we were kind of um, meeting meeting Mythicals and good accounts and we got on, so it's fine. It happens. I don't think we made massive gains. At the start it almost felt like we're gonna do massive gains today, but not that the end. Yeah, I, I don't really want really have much to say about that. Maybe Aphidius buff soon or the bats, I, I guess the buff is already in, but whenever we get the Aphidius patch, I'm definitely gonna whip him out. Not before that though, because um I don't think he's gonna be meta defining even after the bat patch, unless you have Gizmark, which I don't. But the patch is gonna make a huge difference on his damage because right now the A2 doesn't have any ignore defense at all, and this is gonna have either 25 or 50. That's a huge deal. So the um, difference that it's gonna make for the damage is not not like a small margin so i feel like it's not even worth trying him in arena until we get that and the second form is kind of sucky so if he gets locked out it's not like he's really gonna do anything in this form and be useful i think it's all about the first form and trying to do big damage and getting the burn up but okay i'm out i need to go lick my bones and heal up for, from this humiliation, but that's it. See ya.